For more than 20 years, divers and explorers from three continents, each intrigued by clues linking the Gulf of Aqaba and the biblical Yam Suf, have come to Nueva Beach seeking possible evidence of an Israelite crossing. Their search focused on the 600 chariots the Bible says were destroyed in the Red Sea. Inscriptions thousands of years old and the few chariots recovered from ancient tombs reveal much about the construction of these legendary vehicles of war. Could any of them actually be found on the seafloor off the Nueva Peninsula? The first time I came to Nueva, the purpose was to verify, to document, and to establish hypotheses that this could be a link in the Exodus pathway. Based on his analysis of documentary evidence, Leonard Muller had long suspected the Aqaba coast as the probable location of the Red Sea crossing. In 1997, he heard reports from other divers who claimed to have found unusual coral structures, some resembling the shapes of chariot wheels. Moeller decided to investigate these claims for himself. The first time I was diving there, of course, we were then looking for possible artifacts. And I had seen on some pictures what we could look for. I was skeptical and excited because if this is the place for the crossing, then of course that's, that's a big thing. So I was excited about that. But I was also skeptical because 3,500 years, that's a long time. But if Nueva is the crossing site, then of course you would expect to find remains of the Egyptian army. Like others who had explored Nueva before him, Moeller immediately recognized the difficulty of this search. If we assume that a number of artifacts were spread out on the seabed, sooner or later corals would start to grow on them. And of course, if you have a number of layers or coral growing on something, it's very hard to distinguish the structure that was there from the very beginning. Though the coral complicates any search here, it may have been instrumental in preserving the shapes of ancient artifacts. For coral is a living organism that will not begin to grow on a foundation of sand or silt. Instead, it must first attach itself to a solid object, where it will sometimes conform to the shape of its host. So for instance, if it would grow on a wooden artifact, the wood would normally disappear in the seawaters after a time. But if you have corals growing on the wooden artifact, uh, the coral could have the shape of the wooden artifact. And then the corals would consume the wooden material over periods of time, but still keep the shape of the wooden artifacts. During the course of his explorations, Moller observed that the pattern of coral growth at Nueva differed from other parts of the Gulf. Unlike the coral at the northern and southern ends of Aqaba, which often forms large, dense reefs, some covering many acres, the formations at Nueva Beach are generally smaller and scattered randomly across the sea floor. Divers familiar with the area have compared the distribution of coral here to a junkyard and the aftermath of a disaster. This description is fitting, and among the strange formations in these waters, many display features indicative of human engineering. When we dive and when we film at the Noveba location, we look for certain structures, and you try to look for 90-degree angles or circular objects, wheel-like structures. So that is what you scan for, so to speak, when you dive. There are situations where you see something that looks like an axle, a hub, something that looks like a wheel, and you say to yourself, this is not a coral reef, this is a coral growth on an artifact. 
And that is what's different to me when I compare corals at other locations around the world. Since the earliest explorations at Nueva, one distinctive type of formation has often been identified on the sea floor. A slender, table-like structure, sometimes standing on end, with a coral-encrusted base, a straight shaft, and a circular top. It's a 90-degree angle, a right angle, between something that looks like an axle and the wheel. And you can see this in different varieties, and it looks very different from normal coral growth. And uh, it is like a man-made structure with a coral growth on it. After reviewing photographic evidence and making several dives of his own, Moeller concluded that a more systematic investigation of the Nueva seafloor was warranted. He realized that the limited diving time afforded by scuba equipment would never allow an extensive search of the area. A higher level of technology was necessary. And in the spring of 2000, the team lowered a robotic camera into these waters for the first time. This has never been done. No one has been in the area at all with a remote control camera. Controlled from the ship, the camera was maneuvered across the seafloor, transmitting video images for study and evaluation. We have been down to some 80, 90 meters, so we can go deeper down that we can't do with ordinary diving, and we can be down as long as we like. As in his previous searches at Nueva, Moeller scrutinized the coral for specific shapes. You can see that because it's a 90 degree angle, you see at the seabed here, there are some structures that are just a little bit above the surface of the seabed. They have a cross-like appearance, it's 90 degree angles, and there's a hole in the middle. So the hub would be here? Possibly a hub there, yeah, and the, the wheel would be in a circle around. This would be the rim of the wheel here, yeah. okay. So this could be a spoke here, possibly? Yeah, possibly. possibly a spoke? Yeah. And what, what would the diameter of that rim be? That's a good question, but the, we would expect it to be about one meter, about three feet wide okay. in diameter. The robotic camera's survey revealed many shapes and objects familiar to Moeller, including coral formations with right angles, arches, disks, and straight shafts fused into larger masses that had the appearance of twisted wreckage. Now, when we have been able to go back and forth with a remote control camera, we can repeatedly see that these strange structures we are looking for are there, not at one place, but you see them again and again and again. And this could be the outer rim of a wheel. Like the that. abundance of these unusual yeah. coral structures was even more apparent when tapes of the expedition were carefully scrutinized during the months following the search at Nueva. Perhaps have a wheel here, standing on the seabed. When you sit and look at these films that has been taken by the remote camera, you see all these strange artifacts or coral growth on some artifacts or structures that appear repeatedly time after time at different locations at this spot. And um, you can sit there and think, well, what is this? This doesn't look like normal coral growth. And it is amazing to see that so many things and such large areas down there that are like a man-made structure. 